Good afternoon, my name is Brendan Bailey. I just wanted to start by thanking you for allowing me to take a few moments of your time today to speak to you about tiny houses. Tiny houses are an emerging and ever more popular aspect of today's current housing market and a component of the economy as well. I have uh, always lived in a tiny home myself as growing up in, as a member of a five person family who lived in a home of less than 1,000 feet. And I've been doing extensive research into tiny houses specifically for about 18 months now because I would very much like to make a home of my own that is less than 200 feet. So to take you through tiny houses, I'm going to first uh, touch on what the tiny house movement is and what tiny houses are. Secondly, I'll show you some different varieties of tiny houses that individuals have created. And lastly, we'll look at the, the benefits of tiny houses. So first off, uh, tiny houses or the tiny house movement are more of a lifestyle and it really encompasses quite a few things as you can see here. It's about life simplification, having a sound physical plan, self-satisfaction and fulfillment of your goals, and uh, it also has a very great environmental component in reducing your carbon footprint as well. The movement actually began after following World War II when there were um, ever-increasing household sizes, and actually today the average household size is about 2,600 square feet. Uh, the square footage of a tiny house typically is between one and 400 square foot, but there are some that are slightly smaller, slightly larger, less than 100 feet, or up to five or 600 square feet as well. It's really dependent upon what the needs of the individual constructing their home is. So the, in 1997, Sarah Susanka first published this book, The Not-So-Big House, and from there, the movement really just got a strong foothold in the American Northwest and has flourished in the 20 years, nearly 20 years since that time. There are several different types of tiny houses, the first of which, and most popular probably, is just constructed on a typical dual axle flatbed trailer. And the, the great allure of tiny houses is that they're very customizable. As you can see here, the individual has made a very rustic looking home, but also in the interior, they've done a lot of customization with all wood paneling, and they have little uh, storage facilities underneath some of the, the furniture, underneath the bench, and things of that nature as well. Secondly uh, is the delivery truck tiny house, where an individual will just take your typical box delivery truck and use that container shell as the exterior of the home and build on that. This individual has also chosen to use wood paneling for more of an aesthetic appeal, and uh, this is a little more portable than the previous model on the flatbed trailer because it's all in one unit. You don't need a separate vehicle to tow the trailer when you're home on it. Thirdly is the shipping container tiny house. This utilizes the standard 52-foot uh, shipping containers that you'll see on large freight tankers that traverse the oceans between nations and also on the back of diesel semi-trucks that we see on the highways every day. These individuals have actually incorporated four of these, as you can see, one, two, three, and four stacked two on top of the other two, and have achieved a really nice and open uh, floor plan. They have entire glass windows on this upper loft area, and uh, both light and wind can pass through the house very easily, reducing minim and minimizing energy costs and needs. Lastly is just uh, the more traditional foundation house. This house isn't especially large, but it lacks the portability and mobility of the previous three um, housing styles. No, I apologize. This one is just on your typical foundation, concrete or stone foundation, and then it's built up, and up from there. There are numerous benefits to owning, building, and constructing a tiny home. Um, the costs are much less, but benefits include, as I mentioned earlier, self-satisfaction and reducing your carbon foot footprint. So the benefits are really more than just directly to the individual. There are indirect benefits to, the, to society as well in the event that you're reducing your carbon footprint, reducing your energy usage, and you're li just really truly living more sustainably. This is a nice illustration here representing the cost of a tiny house in green versus the cost of a traditional home in purple. And you can see that the initial investment amount is much less. It's only approximately 25,000 versus a 
approximately 150,000. So that's about six times the amount of just the initial investment that you'd be spending on a traditional home versus a tiny home. Secondly, you have property taxes and you also have to pay interest on the purchase price of that home. So the continued costs and elevated costs of a traditional home versus a tiny home become very apparent very quickly. Um, you can see only about $10,000 in interest paid on the tiny house, whereas there's nearly $130,000 in interest paid on the standard home. And the totals for the two really uh, create quite a staggering illustration here with the, the tiny house only reaching about $35,000 for approximate total costs, whereas a traditional standard home of approximately 2,500 square feet, it's gonna close, cost you close to 300,000. Anyway. So, uh, in conclusion, I think it is very simple and not difficult at all to see the allure of tiny homes, both, both uh, for their cost benefits, uh, for the benefits to you as an individual, and the indirect benefits to society as a result of you choosing to build and live in your sustainable tiny home. I hope that this has opened your eyes a little bit and hopefully I will see you out there constructing your own tiny home sometime soon.